So we, we can start with uh, this afternoon's presentation. Uh, so uh, we can start with the first group. Um, the first group, group we have four studios. Um, studio 27 Architecture, uh, Usual Studio, Mias Architects, and Nordic. Um, so the first presentation uh, will be by uh, uh, Jake, Jake uh, Marzo from Studio 27 Architecture. Uh, his topic is uh, the AIA. So let's welcome Mr. Jake. Thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to speak with you. The questions we put to our firm for this project were, how can we use architecture to help families during their most vulnerable times? And how can we as designers remove the stigma surrounding homeless shelters? We know there are essentials to living a healthy life. People need shelter, nourishment, and access to natural light, just to name a few. At its core, this project focuses on meeting this criteria. The AYA is a new short-term family housing facility in Southwest DC it serves up to 50 families in need of immediate shelter. When the residents of the neighborhood anointed the new short-term family housing facility, the AYA, they were referencing the African symbol for a type of fern. This fern represents endurance and resourcefulness. The story of the AYA begins back in 2001 when DC General Hospital was closed and converted into a homeless shelter that served upwards of 270 families each night. The oversized rundown facility was continually plagued with security and management problems. In 2015, the mayor of DC pledged to close DC General Hospital and open eight new smaller facilities in each ward to collectively combat homelessness. Studies have shown that smaller facilities are more easily supported and integrated into a community, allowing residents access to local resources, including stores, healthcare, and schooling without significant travel or inconvenience. Each facility would serve no more than 50 families and be equipped with all-inclusive services, 24-7 security, and provide a safe environment for families. In 2018, Studio 27 Architecture was awarded the Ward 6 project. The AYA occupies a historically significant location in Ward 6, falling within the original master plan of Washington, D.C., mapped out by the French military engineer Pierre L'Enfant. The site is bordered by Delaware Avenue, one of the original streets of L'Enfant's plan that radiates diagonally from the U.S. Capitol. The relationship and proximity of the site to the Capitol played a major role in the development of the building's orientation, program distribution, and captured views. As with any new public housing project, it requires acceptance from its neighbors. Advocating for continuous community engagement was key to integrating the AYA into the Southwest Waterfront neighborhood. Before a single line was drawn to paper, we as a design team met with an advisory board of residents to identify the most important aspects of the local context. We heard that the, that the design needed to be compact and tall so that the existing green space on site was preserved. The view shed to the Capitol and the lush tree line along Delaware Avenue needed to be protected. The building was not to have a front or back so there were no back of house activity concerns. Lastly, the existing health clinic on site that served the local community needed to be incorporated into the new facility. The early input from the community was extremely beneficial because it gave us a set of rules and guidelines to work from. Instead of starting with a blank slate, we had an inherent framework to aid our decision making. We explored several massing concepts that aimed at meeting the criteria set forth by the advisory team. In addition to the rules established, each option looked at different ways of bringing in natural light while creating generous views out to the city. The massing concept that received unanimous approval from the community was a step ziggurat form. Each articulated block is a dwelling unit within the building. Each dwelling unit has two, three, or four beds per room throughout the 50 unit complex. In these images, you can see the preservation of green space on site with the offset of the building at the north from an existing park and the erosion of the Western facade from the tree canopies along Delaware Avenue. This movement away from the trees results in a triangular footprint that points directly north towards the Capitol. You will also notice that each level is equipped with a green roof that cascades down the building, connecting it with the ground plane. In the four elevations of the building, you'll notice each facade is distinguishedly different. This is intentional. To meet the community's goal of not having a front or back to the building, we treated each elevation equally. The moves on each floor of the building directly relate to the program and the exterior environment. At the north, we use mostly glass to give the best views to the Capitol and to capture northern light. 
At the south, we created a dynamic facade that frames the entrance to the clinic and displays the step profile of the western elevation. The calm east elevation is articulated with colorful outdoor play spaces that exist on each residential level. On the left image, you'll see the northern facade comprised of mostly curtain wall. The spaces at the north end are community rooms that serve each floor. They provide a common space for both studying and relaxation. On the right is a close-up of the western facade where you can see the corners of each dwelling unit. The glass locations alternate from an interior corner on one floor to an exterior corner on the floors above and below. This undulation creates depth at the exterior and makes the rooms feel larger than they are. Here we are standing in one of the community rooms looking north to the Capitol building. The height of the building grants some of the best views of the city. This room is equipped with a movable partition that runs down the middle of the space, allowing for separate activities. On the southern facade, we elevated the building to tie into the horizontal datum of the adjacent properties. The use of a plinth originated from this area of the city being prone to flooding. Elevating the first floor allowed us to get natural light down into the clinic's, clinic space that occupies the ground level. We designated an organizing color independent to each floor to foster a sense of community within the Aya. At night, you can see these colors shining through. Displayed in the longitudinal and transverse sections here, you can see the clear use of color as an organizer for each floor. The clinic shown on the, at the top left corner occupies the ground level. The administrative and support spaces for the short-term family housing make up the first level, and the dwelling units reside on the five remaining levels above. The step massing from the second to seventh level required a careful study of unit distribution, as there are fewer units as the building grows in elevation. As mentioned previously, each floor has their own exterior play space that is carved out of the eastern facade. This allows for parents and children to get secure access to the outdoors without having to travel down and out of the building. The outdoor play spaces climb up the east side of the building diagonally from left to right drawing your eye north in the direction of the capital. The playful use of color is re reflected through the openings of the exterior wall. At each outdoor play space, we use, bright, we use brick screening to provide shade and a wire mesh to provide safety. Each room has a colorful rubberized floor, stucco walls, and a glass partition along the western side that allows for natural light to reach each corridor. Here are a few examples of buildings that make up the fabric of the surrounding neighborhood. We wanted to pull from this context as much as possible, so the Aya seamlessly blended into Southwest DC. As you can see, brick and brick screening are highly prevalent throughout this area. In addition to the play areas, we incorporated brick screening for privacy on the first level. Additionally, the colorful buildings throughout the neighborhood speak to the character of the area. These buildings help develop the color palette at the Aya. The average child's age within the Aya is three years old. With this in mind, we wanted to create a warm, inviting, eco-friendly environment for each new family. In the private dwelling units, we continued the use of bright colors in addition to wood flooring and floor-to-ceiling windows, giving access to an abundance of natural light. With this being short-term family housing, the furniture needed to be efficient and sustainable to allow for optimal storage. The beds were elevated to provide, to provide either a space for drawers or a roll-out trundle bed for young children. The larger units are equipped with ensuite bathrooms to provide safety and privacy for small families. As previously mentioned, the first floor of the Aya is equipped with support services that include a cafeteria where three meals a day are served, a conference room, a computer lab for job training and research. Additionally, there is a medical clinic for the residents, as well as an office suite for caseworkers. In conclusion, we believe that architecture can play a pivotal role in helping people during their most vulnerable times and that everyone, regardless of the circumstances, deserves an equal level of care. With the combined use of warm materials, bright colors, natural light, and open views, humane and living environments can be created for everyone. My name is Jacob Marzoff with Studio 27 Architecture. Thank you for your time. It was an honor to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jake. Uh, it's a very interesting presentation. The, I like the thick grass shape. Uh, it's perfectly fitting to the site and creates very diverse uh, public space. Uh, it's amazing uh, projects. Uh, 